I was never an experienced hiker, but the call of the wild and the allure of the unexplored was too enticing to resist. On a crisp autumn morning, I decided to embark on an adventure, hoping to lose myself in the beauty of nature. But little did I know that the very essence of my adventure would become a nightmare etched in my memory. The forest seemed welcoming at first, the rustling leaves and the chirping birds providing a serene backdrop to my hike. It was all I had imagined it would be. The trail was relatively easy to follow until I encountered a fork that left me utterly disoriented. With no cell signal to consult my GPS, I made a choice that would forever alter my life. As I ventured deeper into the woods, the beauty of nature seemed to give way to a sense of isolation and unease. My heart began to race, and I was forced to confront the reality that I was lost. Nightfall descended quickly, the woods growing eerily dark. The haunting sounds of nocturnal creatures echoed through the trees. The chilling realization that I was far from any civilization gnawed at my nerves. It was as if the forest itself conspired to obscure my path. The trees seemed to close in around me, and the trail became nearly invisible. Hours passed, and my panic grew. My flashlight provided limited comfort, as the looming trees created eerie shadows that played tricks on my senses. Exhausted, I stumbled upon a clearing in the woods, and there, nestled among the trees, stood a remote cabin, its time-worn exterior testifying to years of solitude. My relief was palpable as I approached the cabin, believing that help was finally at hand. The cabin appeared empty as I knocked and called out. The wood creaked under my touch, and the door slowly opened, revealing an eerie stillness inside. The air was heavy, and I hesitated for a moment before crossing the threshold. The cabin had an unsettling ambience, and it was clear that someone inhabited it, though there was no sign of life. The sparse interior was adorned with faded photographs and strange trinkets, as if the occupant had collected the remnants of a forgotten world. As I ventured further inside, a disheveled figure suddenly appeared, emerging from the shadows. His wild, unkempt hair and wild, vacant eyes gave me a chilling introduction to the cabin's inhabitant. I could see a wild, almost feral quality in his gaze, and his tattered clothing was a stark contrast to the order of the cabin. His voice trembled with paranoia as he declared that he didn't want any company. It was clear that he had lived in solitude for far too long, and my presence had disrupted the fragile existence he had carved out in the woods. My heart pounded as the man, a reclusive hermit, stepped closer, his erratic movements a stark warning that I was not welcome. I realized that I had stumbled upon a living nightmare, and fear coiled around my every thought. The hermit continued to speak in disjointed sentences, his words making it clear that he wanted me gone. I knew that I had no choice but to leave, to escape the clutches of this deranged recluse. As I backed away from the cabin, the man's gaze followed me, his eyes filled with a desperate plea to respect his solitude. It was a plea I couldn't ignore for my own safety and his. The return journey through the dark woods was a harrowing experience, my steps fraught with anxiety. I felt like a trespasser in a world of shadows and nightmares, a world I was desperate to leave behind. Finally, I emerged from the woods and into the open, my relief almost overwhelming. The cabin, a remote enclave inhabited by a reclusive hermit, had been a haunting encounter that I could never erase from my memory. I had learned a chilling lesson about the depths of human isolation and paranoia, a lesson that still haunted my dreams. The experience in those woods was a nightmare I hoped to never relive, a vivid reminder of the thin line between adventure and terror in the untamed wilderness. I've always been an avid hiker, venturing into the woods whenever I could to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It was on one of these hiking excursions that I stumbled upon something I'd never forget, a chilling encounter that still haunts my every thought. It was a crisp autumn day when I set out on an unfamiliar trail eager for a new adventure. The dense forest swallowed me whole as I pushed deeper into the woods. Birds chirped above, leaves crunched beneath my boots, and the solitude of the wilderness wrapped around me like a comforting embrace. 
Little did I know that this time, the forest would embrace me in a completely different way. The trail became narrower, more obscure, and I was soon surrounded by towering trees whose branches blocked out the sun. I noticed a subtle shift in the atmosphere, a sense that I was no longer alone in these woods. As I continued, the trail took an unexpected turn, leading me to a small clearing in the forest. In the center of the clearing sat an inconspicuous mound covered with leaves and branches, a secret hidden beneath the forest's veil. Curiosity got the best of me, and I began to dig away the debris, revealing an old, rusted steel hatch. It was as if someone had purposefully buried this entrance. My heart raced as I hesitated, but the urge to uncover the mysteries that lay beneath was too strong to resist. I yanked at the hatch, its hinges creaking with the effort. The earthy smell of the forest was replaced by a damp, musty odor as the hatch swung open, revealing a dark and narrow stairwell that descended deep into the earth. A shiver ran down my spine as I peered into the abyss below. With trembling legs, I descended into the underground world, the darkness swallowing the hole. The stairwell led to a corridor, where a dim overhead light provided faint illumination. My flashlight pierced the shadows, revealing a long, narrow passage with doors lining each side. As I ventured deeper, a low murmur echoed through the corridor, growing louder with each step. The voices became distinct, but what I heard sent chills down my spine. The people who inhabited this underground bunker were convinced that the apocalypse had already occurred. I cautiously approached one of the doors, and as I pushed it open, I was met with a group of disheveled individuals huddled together, whispering about the end of the world. Their eyes were white with fear, and their faces were pallid. I was the outsider who had stumbled upon their hidden sanctuary, and they regarded me with a mixture of terror and suspicion. One man stepped forward and spoke, his voice trembling. He explained how they believed the outside world had been ravaged by catastrophe, and this underground bunker was their last refuge from the horrors above. Their resources were dwindling, and the paranoia had taken hold of them. The encounter was surreal and unnerving. I realized that I was trapped in this underground world with these people who were clinging to their beliefs with desperation. Panic gripped me as I contemplated what I should do. I tried to reason with them, explaining that the world above was not as they believed. The apocalypse had not occurred. But my words fell on deaf ears, and they viewed me as an intruder, an outsider who threatened their sanctuary. Hours turned into days as I became a reluctant member of their group, my presence neither welcomed nor accepted. The atmosphere grew increasingly tense as their paranoia intensified. I knew I had to escape this nightmare, but the bunker was tightly sealed, and the people were watching my every move. One fateful night, I made my move, waiting until the bunker's inhabitants were lost in their fearful discussions. I quietly slipped away from the room, retracing my steps through the narrow corridor and up the dimly lit stairwell. As I pushed open the rusted hatch, the cool forest air greeted me like an old friend. I emerged into the clearing, my heart pounding, and quickly sealed the hatch behind me, obscuring the entrance once more. I never looked back, my steps carrying me far away from that underground nightmare. I felt a profound sense of relief to be back in the embrace of the forest, where the real world awaited me. That chilling encounter remains etched in my memory, a stark reminder of the thin line between reality and delusion. It's a story I've shared with very few, as the encounter in the woods was a nightmarish journey into the depths of human fear and paranoia, a place I hope never to revisit. It was supposed to be a family bonding experience, our annual camping trip deep in the heart of the remote woods. But as the sun dipped below the horizon and cast long shadows through the towering trees, we couldn't shake the feeling that this year's adventure would be different. Our family consisted of me, my wife, Emily, and our two children, Lily and Daniel. We picked a remote spot for our campsite, far away from the beaten path. The wilderness was pristine, and the only sounds were the gentle rustling of leaves and the breeze and the occasional bird's call. 
But on the second night, that tranquility was shattered. We were huddled around the campfire, roasting marshmallows, when we heard it faint, muffled voices echoing through the trees. It was like they were trying to keep their conversation hidden from anyone nearby. Emily and I exchanged puzzled glances while our kids seemed oblivious, lost in their marshmallow roasting. Curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to investigate. I moved quietly through the woods, drawn to the distant whispers. It was as if a magnetic force compelled me to find the source of those hushed voices. The moonlight pierced through the leaves, illuminating a small clearing where I found a group of strangers. Three men were gathered around a shallow, makeshift grave, their faces tense and anxious. They looked up when they saw me, and their expressions turned hostile. I tried to speak, to ask them what they were doing, but one of the men held a finger to his lips, demanding silence. I could barely see into the hole they dug, but it was clear that something lay there, a lifeless form wrapped in a tattered sheet. The hushed voices now made sense, and a chill ran down my spine. Desperation filled the air as the men glanced between one another, as if weighing their options. It was then that I noticed their bloodshot eyes and torn clothing. Their appearance told a story of survival against the odds. It was as if they just emerged from a life or death struggle, and the body in the grave was their would-be assailant. My mind raced, piecing together the horrific puzzle. I understood why they come out here to bury a body, why they spoke in hushed tones. They had fought off someone who had tried to kill them, someone who had forced them to take a life in self-defense. As I backed away slowly, my heart pounding, the men remained tense but said nothing. They didn't see me as a threat but as a witness. The message was clear, we had to do this to survive. Don't interfere. I returned to our campsite, my face pale and filled with dread. The story I told Emily was too terrifying to be believed, but as we discussed it, we came to a grim conclusion, we had two choices. We could pack up our family and retreat into the night, leaving behind the chilling secret we'd stumbled upon, or we could stay and pretend we knew nothing. We chose the latter, not out of fear, but out of understanding. The woods had become a battleground for those desperate men, and it wasn't our place to judge or meddle in their horrifying struggle. We held our children close and tried to forget the nightmare that lurked just beyond the trees. That night, as we lay in our tent, we couldn't escape the unease that washed over us. We listened to the haunting echoes of shovels against the earth, burying the dark secret that had brought those desperate men to the wilderness. Sleep didn't come easily, and as the embers of our campfire faded, we were left with a terrifying truth. Sometimes, survival means doing the unthinkable, even if it means burying a body in the heart of the woods. The forest, thick and unyielding, was a place of solace and adventure for me, a seasoned hunter who knew these woods like the back of my hand. I had ventured into the wilderness countless times, but that fateful day would prove to be unlike any other. I had followed the trail of a magnificent buck, one that I was determined to track and make my prize. The anticipation of a successful hunt thrilled me, and the forest was alive with the sounds of nature. As I pursued the deer deeper into the woods, I noticed subtle signs that something was amiss. Twigs snapped, and the underbrush rustled when there was no discernible reason for such disturbances. My senses were on high alert, but I dismissed my unease as the paranoia of a seasoned hunter. It wasn't until I reached a small clearing that I felt a shiver of dread. A guttural growl, not of a beast but of a man, reached my ears. I pivoted to see a group of men emerging from the forest's shadows. These men were no ordinary hunters, and their faces were hidden behind makeshift masks, tattered cloth that concealed their identity. The grim purpose in their eyes was unmistakable. They were poachers, ruthless and merciless, with no regard for the sanctity of nature. As I slowly backed away, one of the poachers approached me with a wicked grin, the glint of a hunting knife clutched tightly in his hand. It was clear that they saw me as the intruder, the unwanted presence in their hunting ground. 
In a voice devoid of warmth, the leader of the group spoke. He explained that they had been tracking the same buck that I had been following, and now that I had stumbled upon their poaching operation, they had no choice but to deal with me. The menace in their tone made it clear that I was not dealing with simple trespassers. These poachers were prepared to eliminate any threat to their operation. I retreated further, attempting to maintain my composure, but my mind raced with fear. I knew that I was outnumbered and outgunned, with little chance of escape. I couldn't help but wonder if they had done this before, if they had encountered hunters like me and made them disappear into the wilderness. As the situation grew dire, I realized that the only chance for survival was to rely on my knowledge of the forest. I had to disappear into the woods and outmaneuver my pursuers. So, I plunged deeper into the underbrush, my heart pounding with every step. The forest, which had once been my ally, became a labyrinth of confusion and uncertainty. The poachers followed me with unyielding determination, their footsteps closing in as they encircled me. I knew that I couldn't keep this up for long. Desperation overcame me, and I made a reckless move, climbing a tree in an attempt to gain a higher vantage point. From my new perch, I observed the poachers searching the forest below, their gruff voices growing closer. I watched as one of them, the leader, approached the base of the tree. He looked up, his cold eyes locking with mine. The chilling smile he wore sent shivers down my spine. I knew that I had been found out. With a swift motion, he beckoned to his companions, and they began to scale the tree. Panic consumed me, and I climbed higher, pushing my body to its limits. But they were relentless, closing the distance between us. My only option was to make a daring leap to a neighboring tree. I took the risk, leaping through the air, and narrowly managed to grab onto a branch. My heart raced as I clung to the tree, my breaths coming in ragged gasps. The poachers were below me now, cursing and shouting as they tried to track my movements. But I was no longer their prey. I had become the hunter once more, using the forest to my advantage. For hours, I eluded them, moving silently through the woods as the poachers grew frustrated and exhausted. The tables had turned, and I was the one toying with them, forcing them to experience the fear that had gripped me earlier. As the sun began to dip below the horizon, I knew that I had a small window of opportunity to escape. I made my move, circling around the poachers and slipping away into the night. I was no longer the haunted, I was free and the forest was my ally once more. As I made my way back to civilization, I couldn't help but reflect on the harrowing encounter I had endured. The woods, once a place of solace, had become a realm of terror, and I knew that I had narrowly escaped a fate that would have sealed my demise. My group and I ventured deep into the rugged terrain, far from civilization. The dense forest swallowed us whole as we trekked through the wilderness. The air was thick with the scent of pine, and the sounds of nature filled our ears. It was on the third day that my world was upended. I had strayed a bit from the group, lured by the promise of a picturesque waterfall that I had heard about from fellow hikers. The excitement of discovering something hidden and beautiful was too enticing to resist. As I followed a narrow trail that led to the falls, I suddenly realized that I had lost sight of my companions. Panic welled up inside me, but I attempted to retrace my steps, hoping to reunite with the group. The forest, however, had other plans. It was easy to underestimate the wilderness, to believe that you could conquer it, but I soon discovered how merciless it could be. My attempts to backtrack only led to greater confusion. I had lost my way entirely. With each passing hour, anxiety consumed me. The fading light was my adversary, turning the forest into an ominous labyrinth. As I stumbled blindly through the woods, I began to hear whispers, voices that echoed through the trees. The voices, however, were not the comforting words of my companions. They were guttural and unfamiliar a chorus of unsettling murmurs that sent shivers down my spine. As I ventured further, I came upon a crude, 
makeshift shelter. It was hidden among the trees and comprised of branches, leaves, and tattered pieces of fabric. I hesitated, my heart pounding, as I considered the possibility of encountering another backpacker who had also strayed from their group. But as I inched closer, I was met with a sight that froze my blood. Emerging from the shelter were a group of people, wild and feral in appearance. They were disheveled and dirty, their eyes harboring a mix of suspicion and hostility. I realized I had stumbled upon something more ominous than a group of lost hikers. These were individuals who lived off the grid, concealed from the world, and now I had intruded upon their territory. My instincts urged me to flee, but my fear had locked me in place. I had strayed too far, and my pursuers were closing in. They surrounded me, their eyes filled with a primitive intensity that made my skin crawl. A woman, their apparent leader, spoke in hushed tones. She explained that they were a community who had chosen to live apart from society, disconnected from the conveniences of modern life. Their secrecy was paramount, and intruders like me posed a threat. I pleaded for mercy, trying to convey that I was a lost hiker who meant no harm. But my words fell on deaf ears. They had their own laws, their own ways, and I was an unwelcome guest. I watched as they began to fashion crude weapons from sticks and stones, their intentions clear. Fear consumed me as I knew I had to escape. With a surge of adrenaline, I broke free from their circle, darting deeper into the forest. Behind me, I could hear their pursuit, the sound of feet pounding the earth and their guttural shouts growing nearer. It was a race for survival, and the stakes were life or death. I pushed my body to its limits, navigating the wilderness with an urgency I had never known. Darkness descended, and my pursuers were hot on my heels. The forest, once my refuge, had become my prison. Hours passed, and I had eluded them, but I was still hopelessly lost. My strength waned, and exhaustion threatened to overtake me. I couldn't go on much longer. In the distance, I saw the flicker of a campfire, the warm glow a beacon of hope. Desperation fueled me as I stumbled upon a group of fellow backpackers, different from my own but unmistakably human. I explained my ordeal, and they offered me shelter and protection. With their help, I was able to escape the wilderness, leaving behind the feral inhabitants of the woods. As I returned to civilization, I couldn't help but reflect on the harrowing encounter that had tested my survival instincts to the limit. The wilderness had revealed its darker side, and I had narrowly escaped becoming another lost soul in its depths. This happened around four years ago now. We were a group of friends, drawn together by our love for the great outdoors and the thrill of camping in the wilderness. Little did we know that our weekend trip would take a chilling turn, forever etching the memory of that night into our minds. The sun was setting as we set up our campsite in a secluded part of the woods. The air was thick with the scent of pine, and the only sounds were the gentle rustling of leaves and the distant chirping of crickets. It was the perfect setting for a peaceful getaway. As night fell, we gathered around the campfire, sharing stories and laughter. The crackling flames provided a sense of comfort, and the darkness beyond our campfire circle seemed distant and unthreatening. But that illusion was shattered when one of us noticed a faint, flickering light deeper in the woods. At first, we dismissed it as a trick of the night, perhaps the glow of distant headlights or another camper's fire. However, the light began to grow brighter and more distinct. Curiosity got the best of us, and we decided to investigate. Armed with flashlights, we ventured into the woods and soon discovered the source of the eerie glow. Hidden among the trees, a group of people in hooded robes were gathered around a makeshift altar. The scene that unfolded before us was like something out of a nightmare. The cultists chanted in a language we couldn't understand, their voices rising and falling in an unsettling cadence. At the center of their ritual was a grotesque effigy, an abomination of twisted branches and animal bones. 
The cultists appeared frenzied, their movements wild and disconcerting. It was clear that we had stumbled upon a disturbing ceremony, and our presence went unnoticed in the beginning. Whispers among us debated whether we should retreat immediately and report what we had seen to the authorities. But as we turned to leave, a branch snapped loudly underfoot, drawing the attention of the cultists. In an instant, their heads snapped toward us, and a collective hush fell over their assembly. Their hooded faces concealed any expression, but their eyes bore into us, chilling and malevolent. Panic seized us as we turned and fled, our flashlights cutting through the darkness. The cultists were in pursuit, their eerie chanting growing louder with each step. We scrambled through the underbrush, our breaths ragged, and the forest became an inky labyrinth. Fear coursed through us, and we knew that we were being hunted. The cultists' pursuit was relentless, and they were gaining ground. The realization struck us that they would stop at nothing to protect their sinister ritual. In a stroke of desperation, we decided to split up, hoping to confuse our pursuers. It was a heart-wrenching decision, but it offered the slimmest chance of survival. The darkness swallowed each of us as we fled in different directions. I could hear the echoing chants of the cultists growing distant, but I dared not stop or look back. My only focus was escape. Hours passed as I navigated the treacherous terrain, guided solely by the beam of my flashlight. My body ached, and my heart pounded with each step. I couldn't stop until I was certain I had eluded the cultists. Finally, I emerged from the woods, breathless and drenched in sweat. I had been separated from my friends, and fear gnawed at me as I contemplated their fates. The police were called, and a search was initiated for the cultists, but they had disappeared without a trace. There were no signs of the disturbing ritual we had witnessed. In the end, I was left with a harrowing memory of that night, a night that had transformed a simple camping trip into a nightmarish ordeal. My heart pounded as I trudged through the pouring rain, each step soaking me further. The storm had come out of nowhere, and I was miles from civilization with no shelter in sight. Lightning flashed, briefly illuminating the dense forest around me, and thunder rumbled like an angry beast. The rain-soaked woods concealed the trail, and I was lost. My only hope was to find refuge until the storm passed. That's when I saw it, a decrepit, abandoned cabin nestled among the trees. The cabin was a weathered relic, its windows broken, and its wooden planks swollen with moisture. It was far from inviting, but with the rain coming down in torrents, it was my only chance to escape the deluge. Cautiously, I pushed the creaking door open, revealing a dark interior. My flashlight's feeble beam illuminated a single, dusty room. The air was heavy with the smell of decay, and cobwebs clung to the corners. There was a sense of abandonment, as if no one had set foot in this place for years. As I made my way further inside, I noticed a dilapidated table and a few chairs, their condition matching that of the cabin itself. On the table lay an open journal, its pages yellowed and brittle. Flipping through it, I discovered entries from a previous occupant, detailing the cabin's isolation and the creeping sense of unease they had felt. I couldn't help but shiver. The journal mentioned strange noises in the night and shadows moving outside the windows. The author's writing grew frantic as the days passed. As I continued my exploration, I found a narrow staircase leading to a lower level. The dimly lit basement revealed even more signs of abandonment, a rusted toolbox, rotting shelves, and a rickety cot. It was then that I heard a faint sound, like the softest of whispers. It seemed to echo from deep within the cabin. My heart raced as I strained to listen, unable to pinpoint the source. The rain outside intensified, the relentless drumming on the roof echoing the growing tension inside the cabin. Then, I heard it again, the whispering. I couldn't make out any words, but the sound seemed to surround me, coming from every direction. Fear clawed at me as I realized I was now alone in the cabin. My flashlight revealed nothing out of the ordinary, 
and the sense of being watched was suffocating. I retreated to the upper level, my back pressed against the wall. The whispering continued, rising and falling in an eerie crescendo. I thought of the journal's entries, of the fear that had gripped the previous occupant. Panic coursed through me, but I had to stay put, seeking refuge from the storm outside. The hours crawled by as I clung to the upper level of the cabin, my flashlight a feeble beacon in the oppressive darkness. The whispering persisted, and I could swear I saw shadows moving at the corners of my vision. The storm outside eventually subsided, but my fear had grown stronger. I couldn't explain the bizarre phenomenon that had taken hold of the cabin. I thought of leaving, but the thought of stepping back into the storm was equally terrifying. With trembling hands, I clutched the journal from the table, hoping to find answers. The final entry, penned with frantic urgency, told of the previous occupant's escape, leaving the cabin forever. They mentioned a presence that grew more malevolent with each passing day. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to leave the cabin, whatever the risks outside. I descended the creaking stairs, the whispering growing louder and more ominous. The shadows seemed to reach out for me as I fled the cabin, drenched by the still-falling rain. The relief of the open forest was short-lived, as the whispering continued to echo in my ears. I couldn't shake the feeling that the cabin's malevolent presence had followed me. To this day, I can't forget that abandoned cabin or the haunting whispers that remain etched in my memory. I'll never know what entity or presence had taken up residence there, but I had felt its sinister, lurking malevolence, and it left me with an everlasting sense of dread. It was supposed to be an ordinary weekend camping trip with my group of friends, deep in the heart of the fast forest. Little did we know that it would turn into a nightmare, unlike anything we had ever experienced. We had heard rumors of an abandoned trapline somewhere in the woods, and curiosity got the best of us. The idea of exploring an old, forgotten hunting area seemed exciting. So, we set out with our camping gear and a sense of adventure. The forest was dense, the trees towering over us like ancient guardians. We trekked for hours, relying on our GPS to lead us to the rumored trapline. It was difficult to ignore the oppressive feeling of isolation and the eerie silence that seemed to envelope the woods. When we finally arrived at the location marked on the GPS, we were met with a sight that sent shivers down our spines. An old, crumbling cabin stood before us, its wooden walls covered in moss, and its windows long shattered. It looked like no one had been there for years. Despite the initial unease, our adventurous spirits led us to explore the cabin's decaying interior. It was clear that no one had lived there in a very long time. Rusted traps, old hunting gear, and tattered remnants of clothing lay scattered about. As we ventured further into the woods, we discovered a network of overgrown trap lines. The remains of animals that had been caught in the traps were still scattered about, a testament to the cabin's dark history. The mood grew more somber with each find. Our curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to follow the old trapline, hoping to find the end of the trail. The path grew narrower and more overgrown with each step, and we were struck by a sense of being watched. Suddenly, one of my friends, Sarah, screamed. We rushed to her side and found her standing near a trap, her face pale with shock. Inside the rusted jaws of the trap was a human hand decaying, skeletal, and half covered by dirt. The gruesome discovery sent shockwaves through the group. We decided it was time to turn back, to leave this sinister place behind. But as we retraced our steps, it became clear that we were not alone. The snap of a twig echoed through the forest, and the chilling sensation of being watched returned with a vengeance. Panic set in as we realized that the trapper might still be nearby, hidden in the underbrush. Our hurried footsteps turned into a desperate sprint, our hearts pounding with fear. The feeling of being pursued intensified, as if someone or something was tracking us through the dark woods. The narrow path seemed endless, 
and the oppressive atmosphere of the forest closed in around us. Each step was a struggle, but we knew we had to get as far away from the sinister trapline as possible. The shadows of the trees seemed to close in on us, and the darkness of the forest intensified. We had lost all sense of direction, and the terror of being hunted pushed us to the brink. Then, we heard it the sound of a twig snapping somewhere close by. We froze, our breaths held, and our flashlights scanning the woods. Out of the darkness, a figure emerged, a man, haggard and disheveled, with a wild look in his eyes. The trapper had found us. He raised a gnarled, rusty rifle and pointed it in our direction. The fear was paralyzing, but instinct took over, and we bolted in different directions, breaking through the trees and underbrush. Gunshots echoed through the forest, each one sending us deeper into the woods, away from the danger. The rain began to fall heavily, but we didn't stop running, driven by pure terror. Hours passed before we finally stumbled upon a main road, and a passing car was our ticket to safety. We told the driver about the sinister trap line, and they called the police. We were taken to safety, but the image of the trapper's menacing eyes remained etched in my mind. Our camping trip had turned into a horrifying ordeal, leaving us forever changed by the sinister presence we had encountered. The old trapline and the deranged trapper had transformed a weekend of adventure into a nightmare, and I'll never forget the chilling realization that we were now alone in the woods, and that danger was lurking in the shadows. It was an overcast day when I set out on a solo backpacking trip deep into the remote woods, a place I'd always found solace in. The towering trees offered a welcome escape from the chaos of the world, and the promise of solitude was my primary attraction. My journey took me along winding trails and through untouched wilderness. As I navigated the dense underbrush and crossed babbling streams, the thought of being truly alone in this wilderness was both exhilarating and daunting. After several days of hiking and setting up my camp each evening, I stumbled upon a clearing that held a long-forgotten campsite. The remains of a fire pit and a weathered tent frame greeted me. It was as if the past camper had vanished into thin air. Curiosity got the better of me, and I began to explore the site. My eyes fell upon a weathered leather-bound diary, half buried in the dirt. With trembling hands, I picked it up and gently dusted off the pages. Its owner had noted the date and the location of the same woods I now found myself in. As I began to read, I was immediately captivated by the words on the pages. The diary belonged to a man named Robert, who had embarked on a similar solo journey. The entry started off as typical camping experiences but soon took a dark turn. Robert wrote of hearing whispers in the night and feeling an ever-present sense of being watched. His entries became increasingly paranoid, describing shadowy figures moving at the edge of his vision and distant, eerie laughter. As I read on, the diary revealed that Robert's grip on reality had started to slip. He wrote of seeing grotesque faces in the gnarled tree bark, and he mentioned waking up in the dead of night to find his tent surrounded by figures cloaked in darkness. I felt a growing unease as I continued to read Robert's account. His descriptions grew more erratic, his fear palpable through the words on the page. He wrote of fleeing deeper into the woods, a growing sense of foreboding, and the inescapable feeling that he was descending into madness. The diary entries took a disturbing turn when Robert described a nightmarish encounter with a group of shadowy figures, their eyes glinting malevolently in the moonlight. He wrote that he had barely escaped with his life, leaving behind his campsite and all of his belongings in a desperate bid to get away. The last entry was dated weeks after that encounter, and it was chillingly brief. Robert had written only a few words, his handwriting shaky and frantic, they're coming for me. I can hear them whispering my name. I can't escape. I can't. I closed the diary, my hands trembling. The forest, once a source of peace, had taken on an eerie, menacing atmosphere. 
The unsettling story of Robert's descent into madness had filled me with dread. For the remainder of the day, I felt as if unseen eyes were watching my every move, and whispers of the wind seemed to carry hidden threats. My campfire that night burned brighter than ever, a feeble attempt to stave off the encroaching darkness. Sleep did not come easily, and when it did, it was plagued by nightmares. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that the forest itself was warning me of an impending threat. Every rustle of leaves, every distant sound, and every shadow felt like an ominous message. The woods, once my sanctuary, had transformed into a sinister and malevolent presence echoing Robert's descent into madness. I caught my backpacking trip short, returning to civilization as quickly as I could. The diary remained with me, a haunting reminder of the chilling descent into madness that had unfolded in those very woods. As I looked back on my journey, I knew I had escaped a fate similar to Robert's, but I would carry the memory of his diary with me, a testament to the terrifying descent into madness that could befall even the most serene and isolated places in the world. My wife and I had planned a peaceful weekend getaway in a secluded cabin nestled deep within the woods. The promise of quietude, the crisp mountain air, and the chance to disconnect from our busy lives was irresistible. Little did we know that our idyllic escape would soon transform into a nightmare. The cabin, surrounded by towering trees and a serene lake, had a rustic charm that we found enchanting. We arrived in the late afternoon and the golden light filtering through the leaves set a serene tone. We spent our first evening sipping wine by the fireplace, the crackling flames warming our hearts. We hadn't the care in the world, wrapped in each other's company, and it seemed that the world outside had faded away. That sense of tranquility was shattered the next morning. I woke to find our front door slightly ajar. My heart quickened as I realized that something was amiss. We had locked the cabin securely before retiring for the night. I gently woke my wife, whispering my concerns. Panic welled up in her eyes as we examined the open door. We decided to investigate, though fear gnawed at us. I grabbed a fireplace poker for protection. The cabin was a jumble, evidence of a violent intrusion. Our belongings were scattered, and the unsettling feeling of being violated washed over us. We could see no signs of an immediate threat, but the overwhelming dread persisted. My wife and I exchanged frightened glances, silently conveying the need to leave immediately. As we backed out of the cabin, I noticed that my wife's jewelry box had been emptied, and a few pieces lay abandoned on the floor. Our sense of security crumbled. We retreated to our car, hearts pounding, and I hastily drove away from the cabin. It was only as we reached the nearest town that we dared to breathe a sigh of relief. We reported the break-in to the authorities, who promised to investigate. As we waited in the safety of a motel room, our nerves remained frayed. We couldn't shake the feeling that our intruder may still be lurking nearby. The police arrived at the cabin, but their search yielded no clues. They assured us that it was safe to return. However, my wife and I were not convinced. Returning to the cabin that evening was an ordeal. The once charming fireplace now appeared sinister, the open door a gateway to terror. We had lost our peace of mind. The night was fraught with tension. Every rustle outside seemed to herald the return of the intruder. Sleep eluded us, and our vigilance remained unbroken. As the early hours of morning approached, the atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive. The haunting silence of the woods was shattered by the muffled sound of footsteps outside. My heart raced, and I awakened my wife, who shared my terror. We huddled in the cabin, waiting for dawn. The intruder was still out there, perhaps watching us, lurking in the darkness. With the first rays of sunlight, we made a hasty escape from the cabin, fleeing to the nearest town. We never returned to that place, leaving our weekend getaway behind with the hope that we would forget the nightmare that had unfolded. Our escape was a breath of fresh air, 
but the fear of the intruder continued to haunt us. Our retreat into the woods had become a chilling ordeal, and the peaceful cabin a place of unspeakable horror. We would forever be plagued by the unknown identity of the person who had violated our private space and shattered our sense of security. Our idyllic getaway had become a living nightmare, and the haunting realization that our intruder may still be lurking nearby remained with us long after we left the woods behind. I had always been an independent person, unafraid of solitude and enamored with the serene beauty of the wilderness. My passion was hunting, and the allure of the deep woods called to me like a siren song. But this trip was different, marked by an ever-present sense of unease. I ventured deep into the forest, further than I had ever gone before. The tall trees and dense underbrush provided the perfect cover for my prey, but they also concealed hidden dangers. The first day was uneventful, and I reveled in the peacefulness of the woods. However, that tranquility soon shattered. It began with the feeling of being watched, the sensation that prying eyes were following my every move. I brushed it off as paranoia, a side effect of being alone in the wilderness. As night fell, I set up my campsite near a tranquil stream. The soothing sounds of flowing water did little to ease my unease. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone. Every rustle of leaves and whisper of the wind seemed to be a harbinger of something sinister. I tried to shake off my fear and force myself to sleep. But my slumber was fitful, plagued by nightmares of shadowy figures lurking in the trees. When I awoke, the terror of my dreams seemed to linger in the daylight. The next day, I went about my hunting routine, but the sense of being watched persisted. It was as if someone was shadowing my every step, just beyond my line of sight. As evening descended once more, I returned to my campsite. It was then that I noticed the subtle signs of intrusion. My gear had been tampered with, my belongings subtly rearranged. Panic surged through me as the realization set in. I was now alone in the woods. I had a chilling sense of vulnerability. Whoever was watching me was patient and elusive, choosing to strike fear into my heart with subtlety. I questioned whether I should abandon my trip, but my determination won out. I would not let fear dictate my actions. That night, I kept a watchful eye on my surroundings, my senses heightened to every sound and movement. As I lay in my tent, I heard the faintest whisper of voices on the wind. Muffled words tarried on the breeze, too indistinct to decipher. In the inky darkness, I knew that I was now alone in the woods. Panic welled up within me, and I knew that I was being hunted, stalked by unseen predators. I clutched my hunting knife, my only source of defense, as I listened to the haunting voices that seemed to surround my campsite. The hours passed with agonizing slowness, and the voices grew nearer. I considered fleeing into the night, but fear paralyzed me. The sense of being watched, the knowledge that I was being pursued, held me in place. Then, just outside my tent, I heard their footsteps. The rustle of leaves and the crack of twigs grew louder as they approached. I stifled a scream as I glimpsed shadowy figures lurking just beyond the fabric of my shelter. My heart raced as I listened to their hushed conversations. They spoke of me, of my presence in the woods. They knew I was there, and they were closing in. With a trembling hand, I reached for my hunting knife, prepared to defend myself if they entered my tent. The tension was unbearable as I lay there in the darkness, the chilling knowledge that my life hung in the balance. The night stretched on, my fear gnawing at me like a relentless predator. The relentless pursuit was a nightmare, a cruel torment that showed no sign of ending. As dawn broke, I heard them retreat into the shadows. I waited, paralyzed by fear, until I was certain they were gone. With my heart pounding, I gathered my gear and fled from the woods, determined to escape the relentless pursuit of those hostile individuals. The terror of that trip would forever haunt me.
My job as a forest ranger had always been solitary, but I had never experienced anything like this before. My watchtower stood tall in the heart of a remote forest, far from civilization. I enjoyed the peace and solitude, but this time, it was different. It began with an unusual rustling in the underbrush below the tower. I brushed it off as an animal, but the sense of unease lingered. It was as if something was lurking in the shadows of the forest, just beyond my sight. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the forest was cloaked in darkness, I saw a figure moving among the trees. The stranger was a silhouette against the dim light, and their presence sent a shiver down my spine. I couldn't make out any details from my height, but the stranger seemed to be circling the watchtower. It was as if they were studying the structure, seeking a way to approach without being detected. The first time I spotted them, I decided not to alert the authorities. After all, it was not unusual for hikers or campers to venture near the watchtower. But each night, the stranger returned, and their actions grew increasingly sinister. They would sometimes stand just beyond the reach of the watchtower's feeble light, their shadowy form a disconcerting presence in the dark. On other occasions, they would approach the tower, their movements calculated and stealthy. My sleepless nights took a toll on me. Fear crept into my every thought, and I couldn't shake the sense that the stranger had a sinister purpose. I wondered if I should call for help, but I had no concrete evidence to report. Then, one moonless night, the stranger's intentions became chillingly clear. As I scanned the forest below, I saw them carrying a bundle that appeared to be a lifeless body. Panic surged through me, and I knew I had to act. I radioed for law enforcement and guided them to the watchtower. It was a tense wait, and the stranger's presence continued to haunt me as I kept watch from above. When the authorities arrived, the stranger vanished into the night, leaving only the eerie feeling of their malevolent intent. The authorities combed the forest, and they discovered a hidden campsite deep in the woods. The campsite held disturbing evidence of foul play, and they concluded that the stranger had likely committed a heinous crime. I never found out the full details of the investigation, but I had a sinking feeling that the stranger's sinister purpose extended far beyond what we could comprehend. The remote watchtower had been my sanctuary, but it had also been the setting for a nightmare that would forever haunt my memories. a group of seasoned explorers, navigating the wilderness on a journey that had started with excitement but soon turned into a harrowing ordeal. Our plan was to traverse deep into the heart of an uncharted forest, a place where few had ventured before. We were well prepared with supplies and a sense of camaraderie, but that was before we became disoriented and found ourselves in a waking nightmare. The forest was dense, and our maps had proved to be unreliable. As the days passed, we became lost, uncertain of our direction. The dense canopy blocked the sun, making it nearly impossible to get our bearings. Panic started to set in, and we were no longer explorers, but desperate individuals struggling to survive. One overcast afternoon, we stumbled upon a makeshift campsite deep in the forest. Tattered tarps hung between trees, and a rickety shelter sat at its center. We cautiously approached, hoping for help or directions. That's when we encountered him, the deranged recluse. He was a wild-looking man, his hair matted and his clothes in tatters. He emerged from the shelter with an unsettling grin, his eyes devoid of sanity. In his gnarled hand, he clutched a crude, homemade spear. His speech was disjointed, a mix of incoherent mumbling and words that barely made sense. He told us that he had been living in isolation for years, that the forest was his domain, and he viewed us as intruders. It was clear that he was mentally unhinged, a hermit who had lost touch with reality. We tried to reason with him, explaining our dire situation, but our words fell on deaf ears. He became increasingly agitated, waving the spear menacingly. It was clear that he saw us as a threat to his solitary existence, 
and he was willing to defend his territory at any cost. With no other option, we slowly backed away, leaving the deranged recluse and his desolate campsite behind. As we continued our journey through the wilderness, our thoughts were haunted by the chilling encounter. We had ventured into the unknown, but we never expected to find a man who had lost himself to the solitude of the forest. Days turned into weeks as we struggled to find our way back to civilization. The memory of the deranged recluse remained etched in our minds, a stark reminder of the dangers lurking in the wilderness. Our journey had transformed from an exploration into a fight for survival, and it was a nightmare we would never forget. It was supposed to be a family camping trip, a weekend getaway to immerse ourselves in nature and create lasting memories. My husband, our two children, and I had pitched our tent near a serene, secluded cabin deep in the woods. The thought of disconnecting from our busy lives and spending quality time together was what led us to this remote location. As the evening sun dipped below the horizon, we gathered around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories. Laughter echoed through the forest, and the kids, their faces aglow in the flickering firelight, had never been happier. It felt like a perfect family bonding experience. Eventually, our children grew tired, and we decided it was time for bed. We had planned to sleep in our tent, but the allure of the nearby cabin was too strong to resist. It was rustic and inviting, and we thought it might make the experience more comfortable for the kids. We settled in, the four of us on a mattress in the cabin, and soon, the sounds of the forest serenaded us to sleep. But my dreams turned into a nightmare. I awoke to the creaking of the cabin door, my heart pounding as I realized my husband and children were still sleeping soundly beside me. Panic set in when I saw a stranger's silhouette in the dim moonlight. His presence was sinister, and he moved with deliberate purpose. I tried to wake my husband but fear silenced me. The stranger loomed closer, and I realized we were trapped. He must have locked us inside while we slept. My heart raced as I weighed my options. I couldn't risk waking my husband and children. I needed to protect them. Gathering my courage, I confronted the intruder. I whispered, demanding to know what he wanted. He turned to me, his eyes empty of any humanity. He explained, in a chillingly calm voice, that he wanted something from us, something sinister. The details he divulged left me horrified, and it was clear that he had sinister intentions, not only towards me, but my entire family. I had to act fast. While maintaining a facade of compliance, I discreetly reached for my husband's pocket knife, praying he kept it there. To my relief, my fingers grazed the cold metal of the blade and I slowly slipped it into my hand. When the intruder momentarily turned away, I seized the opportunity. I lunged at him, the knife blade gleaming in the moonlight as it caught him by surprise. Desperation gave me strength, and the ensuing struggle was a blur of terror and adrenaline. My husband and children awoke to my screams and joined the chaos, and together we managed to overpower the intruder. Disoriented and injured, he fled into the darkness, leaving us shaken but alive. With trembling hands, we unlocked the cabin door, not knowing if he would return. The rest of the night was a sleepless ordeal, and at first light, we decided to abandon our idyllic camping trip. We packed our things and left, the tranquility of the forest forever tainted by the nightmarish encounter. I later learned that the stranger had targeted other campers in the area and it sent a shiver down my spine to think of what might have happened if we hadn't fought back. The trauma of that night stayed with us, a stark reminder that even in the most serene settings, darkness can lurk just beyond the firelight, waiting to consume the unwary. My life had been simple, peaceful even, as I found peace in my remote cabin nestled deep in the woods. 
The tranquility of nature had always been my closest companion, providing me with the serenity I had longed for. But that solitude came to an abrupt and nightmarish end one evening. It started with a subtle feeling of being watched. At first, I brushed it off as my imagination, but the unease nodded me. As the days passed, the sensation intensified, growing more sinister with each glance over my shoulder. I knew I wasn't alone. One evening, as I gazed out my cabin window into the darkened forest, I saw a figure among the trees. It was motionless, shrouded in a mask that concealed its identity. Panic surged through me as our eyes met, and then, with the speed of a shadow, the stalker vanished into the night. I called the police, but in the remote wilderness, their response was slow, and when they arrived, they found nothing but the deafening silence of the woods. There was no evidence, no trace of the intruder. Night after night, the masked stalker returned. I could hear their silent presence lurking among the trees, watching, waiting. The torment was relentless, and sleep became a luxury I could no longer afford. My nerves frayed as each night passed. In the depths of despair, I decided to confront the stalker. Armed with a flashlight and my trembling resolve, I ventured into the forest. The woods closed in around me, and every rustle of leaves was a threat. The confrontation was chilling. I found myself face to face with the masked figure, their presence suffocating. They never spoke a word, but their eyes bore into my soul. Desperation coursed through me, and I realized I was dealing with someone who was relentless and unhinged. My resolve shattered, and I fled back to the cabin, my heart pounding in my chest. The stalker didn't follow, and when I peered out the window, they were gone, leaving me with nothing but the chilling certainty that they would return. With every passing day, the torment intensified. I barricaded myself in the cabin, fearing the impending night. Sleep deprived and consumed by paranoia, I knew I had to take action. I gathered my belongings and left my cherished cabin behind. I sought refuge in the city, but even there, the presence of the masked stalker lingered in my mind. The experience haunted me, and the peace I had once known was forever shattered. Though I escaped the remote cabin and the sinister figure that had tormented me, the scars of that nightmare clung to my soul. I never learned the identity of the stalker, but their silent, masked presence would forever haunt my dreams, a testament to the terrors that can hide within the solitude of the wilderness. It was supposed to be a weekend of adventure, just a group of friends seeking a break from the grind of our daily lives. We had no inkling of the nightmare that awaited us in the heart of the deep woods. The woods were thick, and as we ventured further from civilization, the feeling of isolation weighed on us. We set up our campsite by a tranquil river, our laughter and camaraderie masking the unease that lingered in the background. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we decided to explore deeper into the forest, thinking we'd stumble upon hidden treasures or some long-forgotten mystery. The scent of pine and the sounds of nature were comforting, but that serenity was about to be shattered. We trudged through the dense underbrush, our flashlights cutting through the darkness. That's when we saw it, a faint light in the distance. We moved cautiously, our curiosity getting the better of us. The sight that met our eyes was beyond our worst nightmares. A remote compound, hidden from the world, illuminated by eerie yellow lights. Men with cold, calculating eyes were moving cargo, loading and unloading crates from trucks. We knew we had stumbled upon something nefarious. Drugs, guns, who knew what they were trafficking? Panic set in, and we quickly retreated into the forest, fearing we'd been spotted. But the forest had grown darker, more menacing. The rustling of leaves became a foreboding symphony, and every shadow felt like a lurking threat. We knew we had to expose the operation, to bring it to the authorities. We watched the compound from a hidden vantage point, gathering evidence of the criminal activities that were taking place. 
Our paranoia was palpable as we documented every move, fear gnawing at us. Then, disaster struck. A snapping twig beneath a friend's foot, a moment of inescapable clumsiness. The compound security was alerted, and we were discovered. Panic set in as men in black attire fanned out, searching for the intruders. We scattered in different directions, our hearts pounding, our breaths ragged. The forest seemed to conspire against us, our flashlights dimming, the terrain treacherous. I felt a profound sense of dread, the suffocating feeling that we were being hunted. One by one, the friends I had known for years were found and captured. My own predicament was dire, but I knew I had to survive. I couldn't let their sacrifices be in vain. I needed to find help. For days, I navigated the woods, a phantom in the darkness, evading our pursuers and scrounging for food. Fear and exhaustion clawed at my sanity. The weight of knowing that my friends might never be found was unbearable. My escape came when I stumbled upon a small, remote cabin, its resident unaware of the horrors unfolding nearby. I begged for help and contact with the authorities. The cabin's owner was kind enough to lend me his phone, and I reached out to the police, reporting our findings and the dire situation we were in. The police response was swift, and they soon descended upon the criminal compound. The criminals were arrested, and my friends were rescued, battered and traumatized, but alive. Our ordeal was over, but the nightmare would haunt us forever. The deep woods had concealed the darkest of secrets, and our adventure had led us to a hellish ordeal. It was a stark reminder of how quickly a simple quest for adventure could become a fight for survival, and the scars it left would never fade. It was a crisp autumn morning when I set out on a solo camping trip. The leaves were starting to turn, painting the forest with a medley of reds and yellows. The sun's warm embrace was inviting, but I would soon find myself yearning for its comforting light. As night fell, I set up camp deep in the woods, surrounded by towering trees that cast long, creeping shadows. The crackling campfire provided some comfort, but the forest seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting for something. That night, I heard the eerie sounds of chanting, the voices echoing through the trees. Curiosity and a touch of fear led me to investigate. Following the distant sounds, I stumbled upon a clearing where I froze in horror. A family, or what was left of one, stood before me. They were unclothed, their bodies covered in filth, their faces contorted in madness. It was like they had regressed to a primitive, violent state. In their eyes, I saw no trace of humanity, only a savage glint of madness. I watched in disbelief as the family chanted and danced around a fire, their movements disjointed and incoherent. I wanted to flee, to leave this nightmarish scene behind, but my feet felt rooted to the ground. That's when I noticed the blood. Freshly killed animals, their lifeless bodies scattered around the clearing. My cut churned as I realized the horrifying truth. This family was surviving by hunting and foraging, but not in the traditional sense. They had become predators, living off the land in the most savage way. As I stood frozen in shock, one of them locked eyes with me. It was the patriarch, a man with wild, matted hair and a beard that reached his chest. His gaze was unnerving, filled with a mixture of fear and a twisted sense of ownership. The family began to move toward me, their faces contorted in a feral rage. Panic surged through my veins, and I turned to flee. In my haste, I tripped over a root, falling to the ground. I could hear them gaining on me, their guttural screams growing louder. I stumbled through the woods, my heart pounding in my chest. The forest, once a place of serenity, had become a labyrinth of horrors. Twigs snapped underfoot, and I could hear their malicious laughter closing in. Hours passed, and I was convinced I had eluded them. The night was endless, and my body ached from exhaustion. I dared to stop and rest, hoping the nightmare was behind me. But it wasn't over. 
As dawn broke, I heard their guttural voices in the distance. They were still tracking me, relentless in their pursuit. Fear and adrenaline pushed me forward, my legs propelling me deeper into the woods. As days turned into a hellish eternity, I survived on little more than sheer willpower. The forest had become my refuge and my prison, and the primitive family my relentless tormentors. I felt like prey, and the hunters were closing in. Finally, rescue came from an unexpected source. A group of fellow campers stumbled upon me, my tattered and dirt-covered form a stark contrast to their clean attire. I could only gasp out a plea for help before collapsing in exhaustion. The authorities were alerted, and they descended upon the primitive family's camp. It was a scene of unimaginable horror, one that would haunt the memories of all who witnessed it. These people, who had once been part of society, had regressed into something primal and inhumane. I emerged from that ordeal, physically scarred but alive. The nightmares, however, continued to plague my sleep. The day began like any other hiking trip with my group of friends, a bright sun overhead, the scent of pine trees in the crisp mountain air, and our backpacks filled with sandwiches and water bottles. We were on the lookout for adventure, and oh, we found it, though not in the way we expected. We had set out on a popular trail in the vast wilderness, a place we'd explored countless times. Our laughter echoed through the woods, a testament to our camaraderie. We followed the trail, deep into the heart of the forest, chatting and savoring the beauty of the untamed landscape. As the sun started its descent, casting long shadows over the trees, we realized we had ventured farther than ever before. We were in uncharted territory, but curiosity propelled us forward. That's when we stumbled upon it. An eerie silence enveloped us as we came upon a gruesome discovery that sent shivers down our spines. A corpse suspended high in a tree, swaying gently in the breeze. The sight was jarring, to say the least. The lifeless body, still fresh enough to display the signs of a violent end, dangled from a rope. The branches above seemed impossibly sturdy, raising more questions than they answered. How had the body been hoisted so high? It was a scene that defied explanation. We approached with a mixture of dread and disbelief, our voices hushed, as if speaking any louder might awaken the horrors that surrounded us. There was no sign of anyone else nearby, no clues to explain the chilling spectacle before us. The hiker's face was distorted in a final grimace, and his eyes stared blankly into the abyss. His clothes were tattered, and his skin a sickly shade of pale. I had seen death before, but this was something entirely different, something out of a nightmare. One of our group, a paramedic, examined the body, searching for any signs of life or an attempt to stage the scene. But there were no wounds, no signs of foul play, just the horrific reality of a man suspended in a tree, his life extinguished. We made the difficult decision to cut the body down, to give this poor soul a proper burial. The process was a macabre and somber one, marked by the silent weight of what we had witnessed. It was a task none of us could have anticipated, nor would we ever forget. As night fell, we set up camp nearby, our campfires glow casting eerie shadows across the surrounding trees. None of U.S. could shake the unease that had settled in our hearts. Our conversations were hushed, and the forest around us felt different now, more alive with secrets. We notified the police, who arrived at the scene. The investigation that followed only deepened the mystery. There were no missing person reports that matched the description of the hiker, no evidence of how he had met such a gruesome end. As we made our way back to civilization, the memories of that haunting discovery lingered. We couldn't explain what we had encountered, and it haunted our thoughts for years to come. We had gone in search of adventure and found a nightmare.
My name is Jacob and what I'm about to tell you happened around eight years back now. I remember that fateful day vividly. A group of us, adventurers at heart, embarked on an excursion deep into the wilderness. Our goal was to explore and document the remnants of a long-forgotten town rumored to be hidden in the heart of the forest. We heard whispers about this place, and its mysterious history had intrigued us. The hike had been long and arduous, the forest a vast sea of towering trees and tangled underbrush. We pressed on, following the old, overgrown path that led us deeper into the woods. As we ventured further from civilization, the forest's embrace seemed to grow tighter, the shadows deeper. It was during our hike that we first noticed the unsettling signs. Abandoned items scattered around, a child's doll, rusted tools, and an overturned carriage. The more we saw, the heavier the atmosphere became. A sense of foreboding hung in the air. It was as if the town's residents had vanished without a trace, leaving their lives behind. We reached the town just as the sun began its descent, casting an eerie, golden light upon the abandoned streets. The houses, once lively with the laughter of children and the hum of everyday life, stood silent and empty. Doors creaked open, their hinges rusted with time, revealing interiors left in disarray. Inside the homes, it was as though the residents had fled in the midst of their daily activities. Meals lay half-prepared on kitchen tables, toys were scattered across living room floors, and clothing hung from hooks as if ready to be worn. Our unease grew with each discovery, and the buildings themselves seemed to loom overhead like silent sentinels. The town square held a crumbling, forgotten monument with the date 1922 etched into its stone. It was a chilling reminder of how long this place had remained untouched by the outside world. In the town church, we found a disheveled journal filled with frantic scribblings. The entries spoke of a growing fear, of strange happenings in the woods surrounding the town. The final entries simply read, they are coming. As night descended, we decided to set up camp in the town center. Fear clung to our hearts as the forest symphony of rustling leaves and distant howls surrounded us. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves sent shivers down our spines. We were now alone. As the moon rose high in the sky, a cacophony of eerie whispers drifted through the town. We huddled in our tents, flashlights in hand, our hearts pounding with fear. Shadows danced along the walls of our tents, and the feeling of being watched became overwhelming. Then, the footsteps started. Slow and deliberate, they circled our campsite. We whispered to one another in hushed tones, each of us fearing to make a sound that might betray our presence. The night grew colder, and our breath misted in the air. Suddenly, a voice pierced the silence. It was a whisper, distant yet clear. Leave this place, it said, before they find you. The voice had a quality of desperation and fear that sent shivers down our spines. We were paralyzed, trapped between our curiosity and the overwhelming sense of danger. The footsteps grew closer, and we felt a presence just beyond the glow of our campfire. A figure, dark and indistinct, moved in the shadows. With a surge of terror, we abandoned our camp and fled into the night. The footsteps pursued us, but we couldn't bear to look back. Branches tore at our clothes, and our breath came in ragged gasps as we ran for our lives. By the time we reached the safety of civilization, we were shaken, our minds clouded by the horrifying encounter. We could never explain what had happened in that abandoned town, or who had whispered that warning in the dark. The skies were clear, and the woods beckoned, promising solitude and a break from the daily grind. I packed my gear and set off, eager to find the perfect spot for my solo adventure. As I ventured deeper into the forest, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The woods seemed too quiet, the air heavy with an unspoken tension. I pushed the unease aside, attributing it to my overactive imagination. Night fell 
and I set up my campsite beneath a thick canopy of trees. The soft glow of the campfire provided a comforting contrast to the darkness that surrounded me. I nestled into my sleeping bag, lulled by the rustling leaves and the occasional hoot of an owl. The sense of unease returned in the early hours of the morning. I awoke to a distant sound, a low rumble like the growl of an approaching storm. It wasn't thunder, though, it was something else, something that sent a chill down my spine. I peered out from my tent, scanning the woods for the source of the noise. That's when I saw them, a group of figures moving through the trees, silhouetted by the faint moonlight. Panic surged through me as I realized they were headed in my direction. I remained hidden in my tent, trying to control my breathing and slow my racing heart. The group drew closer, their movements deliberate and coordinated. The tension in the air was palpable. Then, the real horror began. A spotlight pierced the darkness, sweeping through the woods. I clamped a hand over my mouth to stifle a gasp as the beam passed over my tent. They were hunting me. I could hear their low voices, whispers carried on the night breeze. They were playing a twisted game, and I was the prey. It was a horrifying realization, and my mind raced with thoughts of escape. Carefully, I unzipped the tent and slipped out into the shadows. I had to find a way out of this nightmare. But the forest had grown unfamiliar, and I had no sense of which direction to go. The hunters were still out there, their spotlight cutting through the trees in search of their target. With every rustle of leaves, I felt my heart leap into my throat. I moved silently, my steps careful and deliberate. My knowledge of the woods was my only advantage, and I used it to navigate through the labyrinth of trees. Hours passed in a blur of tension and fear. I could hear the hunters calling to one another, their voices growing more agitated as they failed to find me. It was a sick game of hide and seek, with my life hanging in the balance. Finally, as dawn broke, I stumbled upon a river. I knew I had to put distance between myself and my pursuers. I waded through the cold, rushing water, the current pulling at my legs. I didn't dare look back until I reached the other side. When I finally turned, there was no sign of the hunters or their spotlight. I was alone, but the fear still clung to me like a second skin. The rest of my escape was a blur of frantic movement. I made my way back to civilization haunted by the nightmare in the woods. I couldn't shake the feeling that those hunters were still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for their next victim. The experience had changed me. The forest, once a place of solace and adventure, was forever tainted by the memory of that night. I knew that I had narrowly escaped a deadly fate, but the horror of the hunt would never truly leave me. It was a nightmare I couldn't forget, a chilling encounter with human monsters in the heart of the woods. A few years ago, a group of friends and I decided to embark on a backpacking adventure. We were eager to explore the great outdoors, to disconnect from the digital world and reconnect with nature. It was an adventure we would come to regret. The forest we chose was remote, a place seldom ventured by others. As we trekked deeper into the woods, we felt a sense of liberation, the weight of the world fading with every step. The dense canopy of trees filtered the sunlight, creating a serene, almost dreamlike atmosphere. On the third day of our journey, we stumbled upon a small clearing in the forest, and our excitement quickly turned to confusion and unease. In the center of the clearing sat a cluster of ramshackle cabins, each one more rundown than the last. The scene was eerie. The cabins seemed abandoned, but there were no signs of decay or overgrowth, as if the place had been preserved in time. Our curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to investigate. As we approached, we noticed movement inside one of the cabins. The windows were smeared with grime, making it difficult to see clearly, but there were figures moving about, their silhouettes distorted and unsettling. We called out, but received no response. 
We approached the cabin and pushed the creaking door open. The stench inside was overpowering, a noxious blend of decay and sickness. The interior was dimly lit, revealing a group of people, their eyes vacant, their bodies emaciated. They were suffering from a gruesome ailment, their flesh covered in oozing sores and strange growths. Their movements were slow and uncoordinated, as if their bodies were betraying them. It was a horrifying sight, unlike anything we had ever encountered. We attempted to communicate with them, but the residents of this strange community were unresponsive. Their eyes held a distant, haunted look as if they were no longer truly present. The encounter was deeply unsettling, and we couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something beyond our understanding. As we backed out of the cabin, the residents paid us no mind, lost in their own world of suffering. We decided to leave the clearing, our initial sense of adventure replaced by an urgent need to distance ourselves from this unsettling place. Our journey continued, but the encounter haunted us. We speculated about the nature of the ailment that afflicted those people, whether it was a contagion or something more sinister. We had ventured into a nightmare, a place where the boundary between reality and horror blurred. Days turned into weeks, and we eventually made our way back to civilization. We couldn't escape the memory of that isolated community in the woods. We tried to find answers, to understand the nature of their suffering, but our efforts led to dead ends and unanswered questions. I used to love hiking in the woods. The tranquility, the fresh air, the sense of adventure, it was my escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. But there was this one hike, the one I'll never forget, the one that still gives me shivers. It was a warm, sunny morning when I decided to explore a trail that was off the beaten path. I heard from a local that there was an old campsite deep in the woods, a place that hadn't been used in decades. Curiosity got the best of me, so I packed my gear and started my journey. The hike started out like any other. The forest was alive with the sound of birds, and the sun filtered through the leaves, casting dappled shadows on the ground. I felt a sense of adventure, an anticipation of discovering something hidden in those woods. Hours went by, and I felt like I ventured deeper than I'd ever gone before. The trail was getting less defined, but I pressed on, following my instincts and the occasional signs left by previous hikers. As the sun began to set, I stumbled upon something that made my heart race. An old, dilapidated campsite stood before me, with moss-covered tents, rusted pots and pans, and a fire pit that hadn't seen flames in ages. It looked like a scene from a long-forgotten horror movie. I approached cautiously, my hiking boots crunching the fallen leaves beneath my feet. The place was eerie, but I couldn't help myself from investigating further. And then, I found the photographs, dozens of them, scattered among the ruins. The photographs were old and faded, but the disturbing scenes they depicted were crystal clear. They showed a group of young campers, happy and carefree, in the early stages of their camping trip. But as I flipped through them, the mood darkened. In one photo, they were huddled around a campfire, but their faces were contorted with fear. I continued to flip through the photographs, each one more unsettling than the last. It was as if the joyful camping trip had descended into madness. In one, a student was bound to a tree, a look of terror in their eyes. In another, someone had scrawled a chilling message on a tent with what looked like dried blood. We had no choice. Fear nodded me as I pieced together the story. It seemed like the camp guides had turned on the students. I couldn't imagine what could have driven them to commit such unspeakable acts deep in the woods. The sun had set completely, and darkness surrounded me. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized I was alone in a place that had seen horrors beyond my imagination. I knew I had to get out of there, but the feeling of being watched crept over me and the forest felt denser, more sinister than ever. As I hurried back along the trail, 
I couldn't shake the dreadful images from the photographs. What had happened in those woods? And were the ones responsible for the horrors still lurking in the darkness, waiting for another unsuspecting hiker like me? I had to find my way back to civilization, but the sinister secrets of that campsite continued to haunt me, leaving me with nightmares that would last a lifetime.